Hey, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to another COVID debunking video. You know, COVID vaccine safety surveillance continues to be an ongoing program in the US and all around the world. This happens with pretty much every single drug on the market to ensure that safety profile remains top notch and so that any new safety signals can be caught and assessed as soon as possible. Recently, the CDC, in an effort to be transparent, which is, you know, what anti-vaxxers and most normal people would expect from an organization like that, made an announcement that their program vSafe, a safety monitoring program for COVID vaccines where participants sign up and report their adverse events through a phone app, reported that there was an increased safety signal for strokes following the bivalent COVID vaccines in people aged 65 and over. Now, in this announcement, they were very clear that this safety signal was not a confirmed association between COVID bivalent boosters and strokes. And they were very clear to point out, too, that several other programs failed to identify the safety signal. The reason this could not be determined as a causal association is because that's not how programs like vSafe work. People report their adverse events as they happen following the COVID vaccines regardless of whether or not the COVID vaccine actually caused it. Investigators then have to follow up on these reports, confirm that they actually happened, and try to determine whether or not they had any causality related to the vaccine itself. They can also look at the total number of confirmed events following the vaccine, compare it to what they would expect in a normal population without the vaccine, and figure out if there's an issue there. But the CDC was also very clear in this announcement that all follow-up so far had failed to confirm a causal association between the vaccine and strokes. Specifically, they mentioned that a large study of the updated bivalent vaccines using the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services database revealed no increased risk of ischemic stroke. A preliminary study using the VA database also didn't find an increased risk. VAERS, which is a companion program to vSafe, also did not see an increase in reporting of ischemic stroke following the updated vaccines. Pfizer's global safety database also has not indicated a signal for increased stroke, and other countries have not observed this risk either. Again, they wanted to be transparent and say, hey, we found this safety signal and we're investigating it, just thought you wanted to know. So there you go. That's the true story with this announcement behind bivalent vaccines and this stroke safety signal. But are anti-vaxxers reporting it that way, and are they happy with this transparency? No. No, of course not. They would not be that honest in a million years. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to debunk one anti-vaxxer's coverage of this story, and he's pretty much the worst anti-vaxxer out there. It's Steve Kirsch. Mind you, this is the guy who tracks down doctors, shows up at their house uninvited multiple times until the police are called, and then films that whole interaction as if he's a self-righteous Karen who is filming herself yelling at the manager at Target. Because uh, we got a call regarding you coming over here multiple times and it seems like they don't want to talk to you. Uh, well, now it seems that way because she, she called the police on me. Okay. Uh, were you so she clearly, that? no, because there was nobody here, right? I would ring the doorbell uh -huh. and nobody would answer. And so I would come back hoping to, to catch her at home. That's really the kind of person we're dealing with here. So let's go through his substack covering this, claiming that he has proof that COVID vaccines cause strokes and just tear it apart. Okay, so first sentence of this blog post. Thanks to the heroic work of Dr. Naomi Wolf. Let's pause there. Naomi Wolf is one of the loonier anti-vaccine conspiracy theorists. Uh, let me just read you some gems from her Twitter account. Uh, this is a tweet where she's saying that a self-described Apple employee reported a product unveiled at a secret Apple product demo that used time travel in a medical nanoparticle delivery technology. Yeah. So nanoparticles that time travel or let you time travel? Okay. <laughs> Here's one more good one. As I predicted three hours ago, a perfectly blue day now wholly overcast downtown with entirely man-made emissions that spread from plane tracks. Yeah, you get the picture. Yeah, she's she's talking about chemtrails. Um, yeah, so like I said, not a great way to start out this blog post, but let's just move past that and go on to the actual 
claims about the data that Steve makes, because uh, yikes, that's that's just bad. So really the bulk of Steve's supposed proof here, he says, can be found in this Pfizer document, which documents their safety surveillance of the vaccine post rollout. This document covers from December 2020 to February of 2021, about three months worth of data. He falsely claims that the denominator was hidden, but no, we could always know what the denominator was just by looking at how many people were vaccinated during that time period. Using reported vaccination data from all over the world, we can see that, at least in the US, by this time, about 56.1 million people had received at least one dose of COVID vaccine. A little bit later in his blog post, he gets this even more wrong when he says that the denominator that was suddenly unredacted is about 126 million, but that's just the number of doses that were estimated to have been shipped around the world. That's not the number of doses that were given to people. But he assumes that this number of doses is just divided by two because everybody he thinks got two doses, and he gets this number of about 63 million people. But again, just simply looking at the reported vaccination data shows that he's already wrong here in his calculations. Not everybody who has gotten their first dose is going to have received their second dose by the time this reporting has stopped. Just looking at the US and the UK alone by this time point, we're looking at almost 70 million people being vaccinated. And that's not counting the rest of the world. So not only was the denominator not a secret this entire time, he is given the number of doses that were shipped and still gets the calculation wrong. This is kind of just what Steve does. He bumbles through things while screaming on the internet about how right he is, but he's just getting these basic things completely wrong. So let's just do some quick calculations here. The rate of strokes per 100,000 people per year is about 150.77. So if we're going to look at this about 90 day period, that's about a quarter of the year. So let's take about a quarter of that and use it to calculate the number of strokes you might expect in a population of 56 million people over the course of three months. In that population alone, you can expect about 21,175 strokes. That's a lot. And that's something I don't think anti-vaxxers realize. These health events happen, and they happen in larger numbers than you probably think. So in order to see a rise in those numbers and link it to vaccines, you have to do a lot of work in order to do that. That's why there are several programs set up all around the world to catch signals like this. You're not going to be a lone genius on Substack who is getting calculations wrong, finding something that nobody else has found. Sorry. So that number of strokes works out to about 235 strokes per day. And the number of strokes that were reported after vaccination during this time frame for the US was 66. So how does this data show that Pfizer knew that there was a safety signal for strokes this long ago? It doesn't. This next paragraph has some very bizarre logic. Here he's looking at the same Pfizer safety surveillance data and comparing the stroke events to COVID events, and he gets a stroke to COVID ratio of 1 to 4. I don't actually see why he included this at all. COVID vaccines are going to reduce your chances of testing positive for COVID for the next couple months at least. So you would expect COVID events to be rare in a population that just recently got vaccinated against COVID. So I'm not sure what he's trying to do comparing one event that's supposed to be rare to another event that's supposed to be rare. It just doesn't make any sense, and I'm not sure he thought about this really at all. We're almost at the end of this blog post, and still no proof. No proof that COVID vaccines cause strokes. Still waiting. It's not in the next section of this blog post either, which is about VAERS. No matter how many times Steve is corrected on this, he just doesn't learn. Every single time someone tries to explain to him how VAERS works, he gets very angry and defensive and says that he does know how VAERS works, but clearly he doesn't. As I said earlier in this video, VAERS never picked up a safety signal for strokes following COVID vaccines, because there just isn't one. The large raw number of reports that he's pointing to in this article 
are simply for reasons that I've explained before on the channel. COVID vaccines were rolled out under an emergency use authorization. They were rolled out in large numbers all at once. Under an EUA, doctors are required to report all adverse events following a COVID vaccine, regardless of whether or not the COVID vaccine caused it. So that's why it's different from other vaccines that he's comparing them to. This is old news from Steve. He's probably never going to learn, but let's move on to the last section of this blog post. What's his last bit of evidence? It's a survey that he did to his followers. That's right, a survey to his anti-vaccine audience is his last bit of evidence that proves COVID vaccines cause strokes. Sure. You know, if I want to know if demons and ghosties are real, I'm going to go to a paranormal fan page and post a poll asking if anybody has ever seen a ghost. And all the replies of yes that I get, I'm not going to check to see whether or not they actually saw a ghost, whether or not they're a bot, or anything at all. I'm just going to accept their answers as evidence and move on and show the world my proof that ghost exists. That's pretty much what Steve has done here. Meanwhile, just recently, a preprint was posted to The Lancet investigating this safety signal from vSafe, and it found that this risk of ischemic stroke was not increased following the COVID bivalent mRNA vaccines. So there you go. That is Steve Kirsch debunked once again. I'm probably not going to make any more videos about this guy because he's just despicable. And the reason that I was motivated to make this video was because of this tweet here. A well-known skeptic and writer at science-based medicine named Harriet Hall recently passed away. And instead of having any respect or, you know, thought about this death, he tweets this. His entire personality now is just screaming anti-vaccine nonsense and challenging people to debate him with the confidence of King Kong while having the actual knowledge and critical thinking skills of the turd that my dog left in my yard. Nobody should be taking this ghoul of a person seriously, and yet several anti-vaxxers do. So that's why I made this video picking apart his god-awful blog post, and hopefully you found it a little bit enjoyable and informative. So that's going to do it for this week's video. Thank you, as always, for watching. I really do appreciate it. As always, the links to all of the science that I talked about are going to be in the description below so that you can check them out for yourself. And if you did enjoy this video, then don't forget to like it and subscribe so that you can catch me next time where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.